नमस्कार दिस इज अखिलेश भार्गव वेलकम टू टेन बिट्स ऑन बिजनेस एंड फाइनेंस विद मी इफ यू आर अ बिग टिकट बोरो फ्रॉम अ पब्लिक सेक्टर बैंक देन द नेवर एंडिंग पेपर वर्क एंड प्रोसीजर्स स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द प्री सैंक्शन ड्यू डिलीजेंस एंड वेरिफिकेशन बाय द बैंक टू पोस्ट सैंक्शन मॉनिटरिंग ऑफ द लोन अकाउंट is extremely detailed and extensive and it gives the impression that the bank is very careful very vigilant cautious and risk averse it all starts with a detailed background check on the borrower by the bank a check on his company and the industry it entails an exhaustive and exhausting loan application with tons of paperwork it involves pre sanction credit rating of the borrower and the company by an external credit rating agency the bank then conducts its own viability study in its internal credit rating department its own credit department the bank also seeks independent background checks and references from the market a title search is then done of the security which is offered to the bank valuation reports are taken from outside independent experts and there is relentless paperwork and delays before the loan is ultimately and finally sanctioned by the bank if at all it is these pre sanction papers and procedures are not compromised by banks generally and the bank's operations and functioning is checked by the auditor by the rbi inspectors by concurrent auditors by the cag etc to ensure that no lapses have taken place in these papers and procedures that's round one of taking a bank loan as we call it after the sanction of a bank loan starts round two which involves the execution of exhaustive loan agreements guarantee deeds mortgage and pledge deeds hypothecation deeds indemnity bonds promissory notes post dated checks certificates from chartered accountants lawyers values etc under which the bank is super empowered and is super secured in order to monitor the loan in order to protect this interest and in order to forewarn a default and to recover its loan in case of a default and repayment that's how round 2 takes place along with these documents are the numerous covenants and definitives in order to secure the bank's interest and to effectively monitor and control the bank loan on a real time basis such that the bank should be able to prevent any misuse or siphoning of the funds and frauds and it should be able to predict any impending default and repayment of the bank loan in order to trigger a recovery on time and to prevent and minimize losses to banks because of bad loans these definitives covenants and conditions which are meant to protect the bank's interest at all times include monthly quarterly and annual reports on the bank's security together with financial statements of the borrower it includes what are called tnr trust and retention accounts in order to monitor and control cash flows of the borrower it includes concurrent audits by bank auditors it includes inspection by the bank officers physical verification of securities appointment of nominee directors on the boards of directors of the borrower it has a convertibility clause in order to convert the bank loan into equity capital and take charge of the company in case of need there are restrictions on transactions with related parties and group concerns there is control over cash flows in order to prevent frauds and siphoning of funds there are restrictions on fund usage there is imposition of penalty by way of penal interest in case of contraventions by the borrower and various other indemnities are exchanged in order to secure and protect the bank's interest it is that detail as far as the exercise goes The bank leaves no stone unturned in order to secure and protect itself with such extensive watertight stringent and often one-sided definitives covenants conditions and documents but then such fortification of the bank's interest is of use only if the bank is vigilant it is quick efficient and dynamic in decision making in order to protect its interests Two recent instances show the paralysis in decision making in public sector banks which threaten to inflict losses of thousands of crores on these lending banks. Just as loan sanctions by public sector banks move at a snail pace, they are very slow, which the banks justify saying that it ensures that the loan sanctions are not reckless, which they very often are. 
So is the case with decision making about recovery by banks when defaults occur. The decision making is slow. And such delay renders all these extensive agreements, powers given to them useless, resulting in massive NPA losses to the banks, as we have very often seen in so many cases. The first case is about the bank loans to SR Steel and how the promoters who gave their personal guarantees seem to have gone scot-free because of lethargy in decision-making by the banks. The facts of the case, which show indecisive bankers, that too on an account where they have a massive exposure, which has now gone bad, are something as follows. The lenders to SR Steel led by State Bank of India were saddled with dues of over rupees 63,000 crores, including overdue interest and penalties levied by the banks because of defaults and repayments. The loans were secured, among other securities, by the personal guarantees of the billionaire Ruyas, who were the promoters of SR Steel. The banks did not invoke the personal guarantees of the Ruyas within time, apparently due to delayed decision-making, and they let the loans be settled and closed for a figure of Rs. 42,000 crores, as against their dues of over Rs. 63,000 crores, under an IBC resolution plan of Arcelor Mittal, and that inflicted a loss of over Rs. 20,000 crores to the lenders. After the loan had been compromised, settled and closed under the IBC resolution plan with Arcelor Mittal, State Bank of India sought the attachment of the global personal assets of the Ruyas through much belated recovery proceedings at the DRT. By settling the dues under the IBC, the loan account of SR Steel had been closed, effectively compromising the lender's powers to recover the balance amount of 20,000 crores from the Ruya family under their personal guarantees for the loans given by the lenders to SR Steel. To us, it was because of delayed decision making. A recent judgment of the Debt Recovery Tribunal held that in the absence of any subsisting underlying debt or loan due by SR Steel, the lenders cannot trigger the personal guarantees of the promoters now. That's because the banks had settled their dues under the IBC resolution plan due to which SR Steel owed nothing to them and that rendered the security of the personal guarantees of the Euroyas of no use to them. The DRD order is bound to be challenged in higher courts, but it exposes the slow and sluggish decision-making by the banks and the risk because of that that they incur. The banks have lost over Rs 20,000 crore rupees in this case, clearly because of flawed and decision-making about their strategy and timing to recover their loans and to invoke the personal guarantees of the Ruyas who had stood guarantee for the loans given and they should have been made to pay for them. At the moment, they seem to have gone scot-free. The other case of sloppy and delayed decision-making by banks is that of the NP account of Dish TV, where the company owes over Rs 16,000 crores to the banks and other lenders. In a recent interview, the ZTV founder Subhash Chandra, whose family is the promoter of Dish TV, said that his brother is willing to step down as the chairman and managing director of the company if that is what the lender Yes Bank wants. But then he says that the bank needs to decide whether it is a lender or whether it is a shareholder of the company. It cannot be both and it cannot pursue both of those strategies. Subhash Chandra says that if the lenders feel that the promoters are not running the company well, then they should take it over. But in that case, they should be very clear that they are a shareholder and not a lender to the company. The CTV promoter said that they have not got a satisfactory response from the bank so far. It is again clear that under the loan agreements, the bank had a right to take over Dish TV and change the management. And if it had taken this decision on time, then the rupees 16,000 crore loan exposure to Dish TV would not have perhaps turned bad because a timely decision to convert the loans into equity or to take over the shares pledged with it as security and change the management would have, would have taken place and that would have saved the company. It would have also saved the bank loan that was there due to the banks. Yes, banks should have acted within time to protect its interests, duly empowered under the loan agreements, but it failed to do so 
putting huge public money at risk. This is yet another case of delayed decisions by banks which had booked bank money and public money at stake and the chances of its recovery look very poor. And it is not just banks who suffered due to their own irresponsible delayed decisions. Even their borrowers have often suffered due to the inordinate delays by banks in taking credit and lending decisions, whether it be for granting fresh loans, whether it be for restructuring of loans, whether it be providing timely credit support even to good and viable borrowers during their challenging times and the sheer inability of the banks to honor their credit promises and commitments to the borrowers. All these show that decisions by banks did not get taken or did not get implemented and it is the borrowers who have suffered heavily because of the lethargy, the delays on the part of the banks. Because of this irresponsible lethargy of bankers, thousands of borrowers have suffered immensely, resulting in loan defaults and the closure of their units to the detriment of the lender as well as the borrower. To us, the larger picture in our opinion about such delayed decisions extends even further. If banks are guilty of delaying their crucial decisions, then so is the Reserve Bank itself as the banking regulator of India. We saw the RBI going soft on Chanda Kocher, the managing director of ICICI Bank, despite being aware of her misdeeds for many years before they finally spilled out in the open. We saw something similar in the case of Rana Kapoor, where the delayed action of Rana, against Rana Kapoor by the Reserve Bank led to the collapse of Yes Bank, which was then bailed out by State Bank of India. And the Reserve Bank's decisions and actions were also delayed in the case of the PMC Bank, despite being aware of the fraud in the bank many years before the bank went bankrupt and collapsed. That was so in the case of ILFS and DHFL2, where the Reserve Bank of India took decisive calls only after the giant NBFC's collapse. We can see that across the entire channel of the banking industry, the RBI has been taking delayed decisions, banks have been doing that, and resultantly, banks have been suffering, the entire banking sector has suffered, NPAs have gone up, bank losses have gone up. This is Akhilesh Bhargav signing off till we meet again. Namaskar.